organized several meetings with uh, with the colleagues uh, for um, dealing with the different files that they are now on the table under what is considered to be the new normal uh, when it comes to dynamic offices to telework. Um, we have been the, the first trade union to to underline the need of dealing with um, right to disconnect um, because we have just discovered uh, on the pandemic that teleworking is very effective, uh, but can be also uh, really a danger for the balance between the private life and working life. Um, colleagues are uh, very generous, always, always available, answering the phone, the mail, uh, whatever time of the day. And we have now uh, discovered that some of them are really getting sick about um, so their concerns. Uh, even the Commission has realized that the situation is not really helped. Uh, they have, for example, decided to offer five meetings with the psychologist without a prior authorization. Uh, that is the, the proof that there is really a concern. Um, and we were delighted to, 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 to have a look and to take note of the resolution on which you have been rapporteur. Uh, some of this uh, part of this resolution uh, are really in line of what we consider to be social dialogue, the, uh, the need to discuss with the working organization, the right to redress, the protection of the, of the people. And there are some basic principles that we need to stand for for the Commission, because the Parliament is asking the Commission to, to, to make a proposal. Uh, and we want the Commission to, to set the example and leading by the example for its own stuff. Uh, we are not we are not really there. Uh, because, like you have seen, the Commission doesn't seem to be so reactive on this aspect. Uh, but at, at the end of the story, now the right to disconnect is on the table, uh, even if the proposal is is not really a final one. But we have now yeah. something to discuss upon. Um, I mean, colleagues have uh, really asked me to thank you warmly for uh, what you have been doing. Uh, and to underline some aspect of the resolution that seems to be really important for us. Uh, first, uh, is the idea that the time during a worker is available or reachable is to be considered working time. Yeah. This, is, this is the first item to be discussed with the Commission. Mm. Uh, for example, the Commission is uh, proposing to, to, to have the disconnection uh, um, after uh, seven o'clock in the afternoon and before eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, fair enough. But they seem to consider that between eight o'clock we are reachable at any time and the line manager can organize whatever meeting he or she would consider to be helpful. In this respect, the right to disconnect becomes to sort of overwork to be done because in order to be flexible, they want to cancel any uh, core hours. So they want to say that we are free to, to, to work between uh, eight and seven, but we are not the master of our time because it depends on what the line manager will decide to, to organize. Uh, and then now uh, it's clear that the colleagues are saying, you are standing for a right to disconnect. At the end of the story, we are going to be obliged to work even more than before because actually after seven o'clock in the afternoon and before eight o'clock in the morning, no many colleagues were reached. And in any case, it's also underlined that in some special situation, the emergency, you can also reach outside this connection bandwidth. Uh, so there is uh, something that to be, to be discussed, uh, to be underlined. Uh, what is also important is to have the right to redress um, because then there is a balance to be found between uh, what a line manager is supposed to do in order to deal with the, its own own services, but also the right of the colleague to to not be in a way harassed, uh, being called at eight o'clock in the morning or just before seven o'clock, uh, because this new culture of trust that our commissioner run is trying to put forward in the commission uh, cannot um, be made just by announcing this change. Uh, people are the same, managers are the same. We know that some of them are still against telework. They are still considering that they lose control on their staff. They want to be always in a connection and to call colleagues and to ask them to, to be reachable is a way of controlling them. 
Uh, and this, uh, this approach of a policeman is not exactly what we consider to be respectable and acceptable. Um, so I don't want to, 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 to take to your time on that. What will be really helpful for us is just to explain how this resolution uh, has uh, ever started, uh, what you consider to be the main aspect to, to be uh, important for us during the negotiation that we are going to, to, uh, to start with the Commission. Uh, we want to help you, uh, however it's possible to do. We are the biggest trade unions across the institution, so we try to to push forward our proposal in any negotiation because the institution start negotiating uh, separately, but we are the same. So we are going to stand for the same principle. Um, and then if you can just underline what you consider knowing the staff of the institution, because you work with the staff, our colleagues of the parliament, the main aspect that can be eventually uh, take into account because our administration uh, always the guts to say that we are in a way special. We are not other workers. Uh, we we work for a European institution, so principles and rules to be applicable elsewhere are not that easy to be applied for us, and we normally challenge challenge this approach. So thank you again for your availability to be with us, and we are here in order to listen. First of all, Cristiano, thanks um, for Renovo Democracy for this invite. It's it's my privilege to address um, this, the biggest trade union representing uh, institution institutions workers. And I would I would like to take this also this opportunity, which, which is not such a common uh, opportunity that we have to speak directly on on, on webinars on on activities like these. To thank uh, all all the employees and all the all the employees of the of the commission and also of the institutions for your invaluable work um, that you do throughout the year. We really appreciate um, your your commitment and also your your sterling work. I wanted I wanted to take this opportunity. Basically, why are we in this situation and why do we need the right to disconnect as soon as possible? As a European Parliament and also as an MEP, I have been pushing for this right way before the start of the pandemic. Uh, the digitalization of our workforce, the realities that basically this 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 fine line between working time and rest time was blurred way before the start of the pandemic. So the realities of the importance of why we need the right to disconnect as soon as possible were already very clear before the start of the pandemic. In fact, the uh, SND group prioritized on, on the right to disconnect way before the pandemic and the ample committee accepted to have an own initiative, a legislative initiative on the right to disconnect approved way before the start of the pandemic. In fact, um, this this report was approved and allocated to me to be a rapporteur uh, on January of last year. Therefore, three months before before the start uh, of the of the pandemic in March. So the realities of this digital obesity of this always on, always connected culture were visible even before the pandemic. But but we have a situation whereby this line is being more blurred with the realities that we are living in today, whereby one in three workers throughout Europe is teleworking uh, during the pandemic. And with telework, and this was also clearly outlined and, and, and visible by a study being conducted by Eurofound during the pandemic, when you have people who are teleworking, flexi-working, smart working, not working directly from their offices, they are more prone to work more hours than the weekly and daily maximum working hours that are established by law that our forefathers have so hardly fought to achieve uh, during during the past the past uh, years. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that we update our legislation to be in line with the digital realities, with the realities that our workers are basically facing on a daily basis with the, with the digitalization of our of our uh, workforce. So the right to disconnect this political push, this, this visibility is more prominent right now, more visible right now. Um, 
because of the realities of the of the pandemic and definitely the number of teleworking flex working and smart working um, the numbers that we have today definitely i believe that they will go down after the pandemic but we will never revert back to the situation that we had pre-pandemic so we must prepare ourselves prepare our workforce prepare our employers basically to be in line with the realities with the rise uh, in, 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 in uh, of these of these new working realities that are working smart working flexible working that will continue to that will continue to grow even post pandemic when, when, when compared to the pre pandemic numbers uh, and that is why it is so important that the commission starts to act on this now the ball is in the commission's court the parliament was clear on 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 on, on uh, and voted in favor resoundingly uh, of of this report and this le legislation that we are moving forward and i always like to stress upon this point because for us for me as a reporter it was it would have been much more easier to have a recommendation without having a legislation because those who are opposing up to the present day the right to disconnect they are they won't go out there and say that they are against the idea of the right to disconnect they, they will tell you that this is of utmost importance it is a fundamental right to be enjoyed by each and every worker but there is a big but but they will tell you that we can implement the right to disconnect by soft law and not by having a legislation which has to be enforced in each and every member state and i think that the example that we have with how the commission has basically acted with its own employees is clear proof that we really need to have a legislation to have the right to disconnect implemented properly cristiano has sent me um, the information on the application of the I, I won't i won't describe it as the application of the right to disconnect for 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 uh, commission employees because it's 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 far away from what the parliament has basically approved resoundingly uh, in the beginning of this year for us having a situation as cristiano has said where a line manager will basically tell you you have to work more you have to work after your established working hours that is that is not uh, the correct implementation of the right to disconnect we truly believe that the right to disconnect should be a fundamental right to be enjoyed by each and every worker without um, exemptions if we want to implement what the parliament has basically approved that derogations should only be applicable not uh, not because a line manager asks us to do so but in cases of force majeure in very restrictive um, cases this is not basically the recommendation the, the, the guidelines of the commission for its employees are not reflective of what we have basically uh, approved at, at plenary level in the european parliament so that's why we need to have legislation to have to apply correctly uh, the right to disconnect in each and every workplace in each and every member state and this should not be um, applied only uh, by at the discretion by soft law of 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 employers flexibility is important and there are a lot of elements of flexibility also in the legislation that we are moving forward there is the principle of consultation with social partners with trade unions with employers representatives that's really important because you cannot have a one size fits all right to disconnect applied across the board there are minimum requirements which we have established under article 5 of the legislation that we have approved and minimum requirements that have to be respected for each and every worker but at the same time there and we can accept that fact that there and has to be some level of flexibility in accordance to the particular type of um, work that is being undertaken when it comes to the implementation of the right to disconnect. Um, basically, why do we need the right to disconnect? We need the right to disconnect to protect a number of fundamental principles, to protect workers' fundamental rights, to protect fair working conditions, to protect fair 
remuneration because ultimately we're having situations where workers are working outside their working hours and they are not being compensated for their work. We need the right to disconnect to have a proper balance, a proper work-life balance, a balance between working time and family time. We need the right to disconnect to have protection of the health and safety at work. And we need the right to disconnect to have true equality between men uh, and, 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 and women. And the reality is, 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 is totally clear that digital tools are making it particularly difficult to switch off in our free time. And, and each and every one of us has experienced situations whereby you are after your working hours when you are at home after a day work where you are enjoying your family or loved ones during a weekend and you receive calls you receive emails you receive sms um, messages on a variety now of different platforms and you feel obliged to reply you feel obliged to continue working and this is also imp importing the culture the Japanese Karoshi culture, the culture of work until you die, basically, uh, which is not part uh, of, of, and we don't want to promote it as being part of the European culture, a culture of uh, continuing to work, to be more productive, to be um, more productive when compared to your employees, continue to work out of fear that you can face negative repercussions by your employer or appear that you are less productive to your uh, um, to your colleagues if you don't uh, continue continue to work and all of this is putting a lot of pressure on our workforce and it is continuing to put pressure on the mental well-being of our of our workforce and if we really and truly want to fight against um, issues of mental Ill health which are continuing to rise which is the second pandemic that we are facing as we speak. It's a big reality uh, that is being faced across um, the border. We have to implement the right to disconnect as soon as possible, because uh, this is also an argumentation that is being raised all the time. The issue of competitivity, the issue that if we implement the right to disconnect, we will be reducing the competitivity of, of the European workforce when compared to other continents. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because how can you basically rest on the fact that employees should be productive outside their working time? Here we are dealing when we're dealing with the right to disconnect of hours, which are not part of the working time. If we are dealing with working time, we would have dealt with this reform under the working time directive. We have dealt with this reform under a separate piece of legislation because, first of all, there is no definition of the right to disconnect as things stand at EU level. And secondly, uh, because ultimately we are dealing with hours which fall outside the working time um, directive. And that's why we needed a, an instrument, a legal instrument to define, to move forward the number of minimum requirements and also an instrument to give redress to our to our employees because ultimately it would be useless to have the right to disconnect without giving the protection without giving the means to enforce the right to disconnect by each and every employee and we have very and a very ambitious text when it comes to the reversal of the burden of proof um, in prima facie cases of employees facing discrimination when basically they are invoking their right to disconnect and also other uh, protection, direct protection, that employees would be basically feeling um, safe uh, to invoke uh, their right their right to disconnect. If we wouldn't have provided this level of protection, ultimately no worker would take the risk to try to implement, to implement the, the, their right um, to disconnect. This is only one of the of the realities that we have to start tackling. Um, 
when it comes to the new working realities that will continue post-pandemic, when it comes to telework, I believe that we can and we should do much more. For example, when it comes to uh, how teleworking is, is being awarded and flexi working is being awarded, I believe, and I and there is already we have already started this discussion uh, in the in the employment committee. The teleworking should be a free choice of uh, workers. There are realities that we have also witnessed whereby there are workers who are also uh, suffering from from their mental health because basically they are working all the time and this is imposed on them to work all the time from home these are also realities that we are facing therefore we believe that this should be an autonomous a free choice of workers to basically decide how to work if working from office if working from home and how basically to um, to regulate uh, their, 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 their time on their places of work. So I think, I think we have a lot of do, to do in front of us, as I said in my uh, initial remarks, now the board rests in the commission court. We are continuing to put pressure on the commission um, to act as soon as possible. After the report was and the legislation was approved from parliament, we have also witnessed also a number of positive uh, vibrations coming from a number of member states, for example, Ireland, which has also implemented and the right to disconnect as a fundamental right to all its workers a couple of a couple of weeks ago, uh, based also on what we are proposing uh, in the European Parliament. So this was a very important step for us. There are also discussions being undertaken in a number of member states in Portugal and Malta to implement the right to disconnect. But we believe that, first of all, the Commission has to lead by example. Um, we as a political group, as a political family, for example, as the SND group, we have started implementing immediately the right to disconnect for all the members of the Secretariat of the of the SND group fully upon what we have been proposing in the European Parliament. So the Commission has to start basically uh, leading by example and implementing correctly, not uh, implementing partially or giving the impression of implementing the right to disconnect when it's not implementing the right to disconnect at all. With the with the working methods being proposed. Uh, and communicated to its employees a couple of a couple of weeks ago. Um, but ultimately, yes, I think this should be a political priority of our union of the Commission to have the right to disconnect, uh, respected, implemented, enjoyed by each and every worker. Because the examples, apart from Ireland, that we have of uh, implementation of the right to disconnect in Belgium, in, in France. In Italy for smart workers, it's never an implementation of the right to disconnect as a fundamental right. Right, it's a haphazard implementation. Implementation in France for uh, undertakings employing more than fifty workers in Italy. Uh, application of the right to disconnect and the enjoyment of the right to disconnect only for teleworkers for smart workers. So it's really important to have this this right correctly and fully implemented, fully enjoyed by each and every worker during the pandemic and also post, uh, post pandemic. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, uh, I, I wonder if we, you don't deserve to be our membre d'honneur <laughs> of our trade union. Uh, you, you are so clear, so tough on uh, standing for the same principle and approaches that we are. That we are dealing with. Um, again, I think that on the resolution, what is really remarkable is the attention given to the right of redress, uh, because then it is the proof that you were totally aware that things are not going to 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 be made by themselves. Uh, it's going to be a tough discussion to be organized. Um, and what is a bit tricky on the discussion that we are going to have uh, with the with commission is. To find a balance between what is considered to be a sort of a bonus, full flexibility, 
so you, you don't need to have a core times anymore. Uh, so you don't have, you are not obliged to be at your office or eventually online from uh, 9.30 to uh, 12.30 like it is today or from 3 to 4.30. So we abandon the principle or a core time and is presented like uh, the proof of the trust toward the staff flexibility. We introduce uh, uh, the principle of uh, uh, bandwidth uh, disconnection. Uh, and then the result is to, to come up with a situation in which actually, instead of getting more, we risk to, to be even worse uh, and to be always available from eight o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock in the, in the afternoon. Uh, and any line manager can decide upon the need to organize a meeting at six o'clock more than eight o'clock in the morning. And what is really clear on the resolution is the idea that the working time must be also foreseeable. Uh, we cannot just discover in the morning that something can be decided a few minutes or a few hours later, uh, because then we'll put pressure on us to be always reachable actually uh, uh, between this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this idea of uh, disconnection, but with that we will become actually connection time of 12 hours per day, so even more, because actually it's 13 hours per day. So how we can deal with this, uh, with this uh, apparent contradiction between uh, uh, abolishing the core time seems to be in the, a gift for providing more flexibility uh, to establish a bandwidth for this connection seems to be reasonable, but putting that together, we will come up with a 13 hours of, to be connected. This is this is the big reality and the big challenge that we have, and I think that the most important element uh, in, in in this discussion is the issue of recording of working time, and this is also a fundamental point and the minimum requirement that we are moving that we are moving forward. Basically, um, uh, if we stay too much and continue to give too much and sole importance only to the core working time without giving attention of all those, all the time that comes after that core working hours, we will, it will be definitely impossible for us to, to, to have full implementation and full enjoyment of the right to this conduct. Therefore, I think that the issue of um, flexibility is important. The issue of flexibility, ultimately, uh, I believe that it will also uh, lead to better work-life balance, but ultimately, when it comes to the implementation of the right to disconnect, the recording of working time and proper recording of working time is key, ultimately to safeguard the fundamental right of each and every worker not to work above the maximum uh, working hours established by union and uh, member state law. So this is a fundamental point that we have to respect, ultimately to have the full enjoyment of, 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 of the right to this one next. Recording of working time here, I believe, uh, is key. And not only recording, but full access uh, to um, of the recording of the working time to the employees. And, and recording of working time is exactly what the Commission is proposing to cancel. Uh, again, in the logic of full flexibility, um, and I mean, it's fascinating. And what we want to avoid, and is exactly what the Parliament does underline, is a system on which we have just a basic rule, and then each and every line manager will implement its own or her own way to to consider what is acceptable or not. Uh, and no one, and then again, is the I mean, there are two principles that they are uh, put on the table, a flexibility in the interest of the staff and interest of the service in order to be able to deal uh, with the needs of the institution, because we all agree that we work uh, also and even uh, mostly for the citizens. So it's true that if the commission must react properly and fast, uh, we are not managing our work time. I mean, colleagues who are dealing with vaccines are not saying, at five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we'll stop it uh, because they know that we, they work under under pressure and is urgent to to deal with the files. We we all know that this, 
we, we all know, uh, we all have this experience. We have also on the staff regulation, the principle that, hey, this staff must be always uh, available. They cannot be paid for uh, over time. So we know our privileges and we, we are not, uh, and we are more than ready to to stand and to to, 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 to do that in practice. But everything now seems to be very complex and all the files are, um, linked each other. Um, uh, for example, we are dealing with something that is not directly linked to to this uh, right of the connection, but it's the organization of the offices. So you are uh, uh, teleworking uh, in a way, like you just mentioned, you are almost obliged to telework, even if you don't like it. Uh, uh, and even if you don't like to telework, you will uh, find yourself in an open space, a dynamic office that in, in a way you, you are uh, almost obliged to go on telework if you don't want to spend the five days per week in, a, in an open space and having noises and all the other concerns. So there is also this trade-off who is uh, proposing between uh, uh, telework and then open space. Uh, and it, it, everything seems to be open to the choice of the staff, but at, at the end of the story, it's like to have a path on which uh, there is no other choice that to follow what is imposed. Uh, and everything is presented to be in, in your own interest, uh, like it is not exactly and always the case. Um, uh, so this is important. This is, you consider that to, to record the time is something that cannot be just abandoned uh, in order to have uh, what is presented to be full flexibility, but more becoming full connection for 13 hours per day. Um, we cannot, and this is also a point, Cristiano, that you have you have mentioned. We cannot tackle the right to disconnect in vacuum alone without basically tackling all the issues that we have surrounding uh, the practices of teleworking. I think that uh, when it comes to uh, basically how teleworking is working uh, in, in in practice. I think that we have to also revolutionize uh, the legislation uh, revolving around teleworking. The, the reality is that we're there. When the teleworking directive was approved by social partners is a totally different reality than the realities that we are living in today during the pandemic and with the changes um, and the shifts that the pandemic will basically bring in our workforce. So we have to be also um uh, we have to be, be also prepared to uh, update uh, the teleworking the teleworking directive again as i said also in my presentation I, I i have not understood how the commission has perceived um the legislation and also the recommendations of the european parliament when it comes to the right to disconnect this 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 uh, powers being given to the line manager basically giving the key for line managers to uh, derogate freely from the right to disconnect when we were very clear that the derogation should only be undertaken in very extreme cases in cases of force majeure and not being basically uh, agreed by unilaterally by the employer himself and they have to be discussed directly with with social partners representing also the employees so this should not be a unilateral decision and having a situation like that all of us can understand can understand the realities of different and the working methods and, and the pressure that we have uh, with 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 with, with uh, a number of dossiers as, as cristiano has also mentioned i can totally understand the stress the the, the 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 timelines and deadlines that those employees working directly on on, on the vaccine strategy uh, in the institutions will will have as we speak but at the same time i i think that we have to be very cautious here very cautious with uh, basically the interpretation of the right to disconnect we cannot we cannot accept the fact that derogation should be the norm and not the exception 
and uh, having this lack of clarity and also having the interpretation being given by the commission to uh, the application of the right to disconnect let's put it like that for 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 commission employees i think i think it would be very unfair to treat the right to disconnect in this light touch uh, approach which 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 for me is no right to disconnect at all uh, because there is no consultation between the the employee his representatives and the employer and this is being taken only by a unilateral decision which which for me it doesn't make sense to have the right to disconnect properly uh, implemented at the workplace uh, it's not the case with with uh, the guidelines being issued uh, by the commission for its employees yeah yeah thank, um i mean we we still have to to start our negotiation so what we have now in paper is sort of a proposal uh, that we are going to negotiate upon and we are confident that with the, with the support of our commissioner and we are going to improve the proposal uh, like the proposal is clearly showing i mean uh, Clearly and that's what was now going on in the commission. There are those who are against the telework. The commission is pushing the telework mostly because it's uh, in a way the trade off with the new arrangement of the building policies. They want to save uh, money uh, organizing otherwise the buildings, uh, going for uh, uh, dynamic office, open space uh, to establish a ratio between. Uh, uh, around the 70%. So we will have uh, seven posts uh, for 10 people. So they work under the, 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 the certitude that they are going to be part of the staff uh, structurally on teleworking. And then we'll save money. So we are not going to get any more hour in office. Uh, what they propose is just you you book your office so when you want to go to the office in a flux, full flexible approach. Some director generals and some managers are just denouncing that in this new way of working, the manager will lose total control on the staff. And they are not keen on accepting this approach. Uh, that's why the, the trade off seems to be OK, but as a line manager, you will have a full control on your own staff. You can organize the meetings, you can uh, call your colleagues, uh, and then you come up with a sort of this monster that we have in front of us on which you must telework, uh, but you are free not to telework, but you don't get to your office anymore if you don't want to telework. Uh, you, are, you are entitled to get uh, one day of telework as a right, but uh, the principle is that you spend three days per week as a teleworking, because they don't want to have, they don't have the power actually to impose their own policy towards the DGs. Uh, and then uh, when the DGs are opposing uh, to the telework, uh, they just organize a, a short uh, survey in order to get the opinion of the staff supporting telework and being able to go to the, the director general's mentioning your own staff is in favor of telework. Uh, and the director general is organizing a counter poll uh, concerning the offices. Uh, and they are denouncing that the administration wants to put everyone in dynamic office and then come up to the results going to the GHR. Perhaps our staff is in favor of telework, but they are totally against the offices that you are providing for them. And then is this kind of a, a game uh, going around and we are in the middle trying to find the best way to, to deal with that because, I mean, we know that if everyone uh, is free to decide to go on telework, most of the colleagues will accept it and they will be glad to. And then it's also true that if you spend three days per week on telework, you cannot ask for having the same office that you were entitled to get before. Uh, but it's clear that uh, any square meter of our office costs mm -hmm. a lot of money for the taxpayer. And, and so we are dealing with this and this paper are just floating around and this I think that is the fifth version of the same paper. The presentation is the same, but the content is evolving. And now uh, it's the first time that we see in on the paper this try to disconnect that was just forgotten before because we were asking the commission to, to lead by the example, even without the input of the parliament, because of what you have put on your resolution is just to respect the full principle that the commission is supposed to stand for, because they are the values of the European Union. Yeah. And you don't need the parliament to ask you to do. 
if you want to to be there as a guardian of the treaty, like the commission is pretending. So the negotiation we start, um, and we are confident that we can redress what is on now on the on the table, and that's why the discussion with you is so helpful in order to really understand what the parliament has asked the commission to do, uh, because I'm confident that the commission wouldn't dare to do something totally against what the parliament has asked the commission to propose. Uh, because when it comes to have a public uh, publicity and visibility or something wrong, the Commission starts becoming very reluctant to, to afford the bad publicity. And we think that our Commission and even the President have a social sensibility in order to understand that see, some Director General, they just have to understand that principle must be respected. Uh, and here we are no longer in uh, older <laughs> centuries. Um, we have some question to, uh, to for you. Uh, one colleague is asking, are, are we going to find the right balance between work and our personal life in simple terms? Yes. Um, uh, first of all, Cristiano, I totally agree also with you uh, with regards to your remarks. Here, it's, it's, it's a situation whereby it's a take it or leave it situation. Uh, so, if, if, if politely they are saying that if you won't accept what we are proposing, you will be basically losing, not perks, but some of your fundamental rights that you are enjoying today, mm. because this sure. is not a losing perks situation. So, from, uh, from my end, this is something that I am um, committing personally. Uh, if... Um, your trade union, your union, your during these negotiations will also require that we move pressure directly with the Commission by parliamentary questions on the on the implementation also of the right to disconnect directly by the Commission. Um, I will be more than willing to move forward this 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 pressure because for me it is of fundamental importance. This is the starting point of all the discussions. If um, we want to go to our member states and tell them, please start acting on the right to disconnect. And we have the European Commission, which should lead by example, which is basically trying to um, implement, not partially, but giving the, implement, giving the impression that there is a right to disconnect, but there is no right to disconnect at all. That, that, that there is... Uh, flexibility when the flexibility is being imposed. Uh, this this definitely would not be a good example to get our member states to act on the right to disconnect. When it comes to work-life balance, the question is very, very relevant to our discussion. And as I said in my presentation, I believe that this was one of the most important elements uh, of of why the raison d'etre behind the right to disconnect to have this work life balance to have this 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 uh, basically also help to parents and to workers who have also other responsibilities caring responsibilities not only parents but um, workers who ha who have dependents who are dependent on them uh, that is why we need the right to disconnect, not to overwork, not to have a situation, as Eurofound clearly pointed out in, in the study that I mentioned in my presentation, whereby 38% of workers who are teleworking during the pandemic are saying that they are working more than the eight uh, daily working hours, which is the limit uh, of working hours, the maximum working hours that workers should work uh, each, each day. Uh, how can you tackle other family responsibilities if you work for 10 hours, for 11 hours? And that is why, and that is one of the reasons why we need to have this clear line between working time and rest time. It is of fundamental, of fundamental importance to have this line, which was blurred before the pandemic, but which is being blurred much more during the pandemic to be clear again so these responsibilities could be ultimately undertaken um, clearly by our workers and not continue to increase stress which is leading to depression 
which is leading to isolation, which is leading to burnouts, which, which are daily realities, daily realities that our workers are facing, that our parents uh, having other responsibilities to, to take care of during their, 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 their day are basically facing. And this should be something, uh, this should be a priority uh, of our union. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. You can be ensured that we will uh, rely on your support and whenever is needed and the support of the parliament. We are well known for working together with the parliament and I'm very sad sometimes to, to, to see that only the parliament can help us in something that the commission or the institution uh, must be able to, to deal with uh, directly. The example of harassment, for example, is, is, uh, is really a, a scandal. Uh, we get from the CONT committee uh, the support that the institution are not able to provide us and to provide the staff with. Uh, and it's really a scandal that we must uh, play with the financial consequence of something that is really against the human values that the Commission is standing for and the other institution is standing for. But it's only when the Parliament is uh, taking mm -hmm. something in charge that things start moving. Uh, the file of the uh, Social Committee are really the best example. Uh, it was imposed by the parliament to to refuse the discharge and only when things like this can happen we see things moving internally uh, but we want our institution to work properly without having the pressure for someone else uh, and we hope that we will manage to convince them to to lead by the example but should not be the case you can be sure that we will rely on your support and the parliament support for pushing things forward Definitely. because i mean we we know that if the commission is not applying properly the right to this connection no one else would have the credibility to stand for that toward the member states uh, i'm i'm dealing in my other part of the work with the public procurement the commission must lead by the example also for the procurement if we want to be credible when we challenge the products of the member states uh, and that is the same kind of yeah. of idea and there is really a, a, a sad uh, situation when you see that if you don't manage properly 1,000 euro with a procedure, everyone starts panicking. But when you don't manage properly hundreds of staff, no one seems to be afraid of. Uh, like if uh, uh, 1,000 euros can be more important than the, the lives of the, 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 or the balance of the lifetime of the colleagues and it's, uh, and it's really a set and we will work for changing this approach and yes. we, we hope that we can, we can manage to to do. Um, I have seen question in the in the chat. Yes, true. The commission is not totally uh, against the idea of providing sort of a, a bonus for uh, for uh, what is the what are the cost for the telework. Uh, the commission has already provided the staff uh, with the possibility to buy chairs and bigger screen for telework. So oh, it's not, uh, it will be part of the negotiation because telework is also a good uh, uh, bargain for the institution yep. because they save, they save a lot of money on that, uh, on mm -hmm. the building, on the heating, on the, on the everything. Okay, uh, I see if we have other questions and uh, if colleagues uh, want to, to raise their hands for, um, question to be put to if Alex. I, if I may, Cristiano, there is a very yeah, sure. interesting, there is an interesting question, which we have also tackled in, um, in, in our resolution, the issue of monitoring, permanent yeah. monitoring and devices whereby tools, instruments are being installed, basically to see uh, if workers, employees are basically using their devices and I, I, I came into, into a situation, and this is, this is a personal situation, which I want to recount. I was in Malta in the beginning of the, the pandemic, March, April of last year, a year ago. And I went to meet a friend and I, I knocked on his door and he came out and he told me, can you give me some time after like 10 minutes? He told me, can you give me some time so that I can go and touch a bit my, my, my device and I was saying, what, what, is he, what is he saying? And when I asked him, this was a reality of a year ago in the start, in the, in the start, starting stages of the pandemic, he told me, 
I went to um, touch a bit my keyboard because there is an application on my device that if I don't touch my mouse pad, my keyboard for 15 minutes, it will send uh, a signal to my to my employer, and this is uh, an employee in the private sector. Um, it will send a, a signal saying that uh, I haven't used my device for 15 minutes and also sending the location of the device. And this, I think, breaches all fundamental, basic fundamental rights of our, our employees. And uh, we have already also highlighted this issue. This is also another issue which should and must be highlighted as soon as possible and make things clear that these tools being installed directly on devices of workers who are teleworking um, should, not, should never be acceptable because they are infringing the fundamental privacy rights uh, of, 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 our, of our employees. And this should never become the norm. And I really hope that these devices are not being uh, installed on the on the devices of the commission of the commission employees. I I, I hope I really hope that that, that this is not this is not um, uh, this is not the case. Um, I think that there are maybe some other questions, Cristiano, in the chat box, which you maybe want to highlight too. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, we have the same system for uh, being online or not, but I, I hope at least that no message is sent to our <laughs> line manager. <laughs> but this idea of moving a bit your mouse in order to show that you are <laughs> available <laughs> is something that most of the colleagues are afraid of. Uh, yeah, there are questions uh, that we have already discussed about uh, the core time and core hours. Uh, I do agree with the colleague that uh, what can be presented as a gift is not. Uh, so without core hours, uh, we will be just in the hands of the line manager for 10 hours, 13 hours a day. So it's totally unacceptable. So we are going to, to, to have a tough negotiation also on that. Um, there is a question, how do we see the element to right to disconnect, for example, vertically towards the hierarchy and horizontally towards the colleagues? Ah, yes, yes. Very good question. And sorry for not mentioning this point also in my initial presentation. The right to disconnect can never be totally implemented if we only try to point our fingers to uh, our, um, our employers. Uh, this should also be a culture change uh, and part and parcel of the legislation we should and we must also have in work training. In work training, uh, for and this is also part of the recommendation that we are moving forward and we are training between um, employees themselves basically to respect the right to disconnect of their colleagues. If ultimately we have situations and we see these situations happening also on a daily basis between ourselves, whereby we have um, colleagues who are copying in, I don't know how many, um, uh, how many different colleagues at 11 in the evening at, 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 at midnight and you still receive your uh, notifications that 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 an email has been sent and you have received an email from your colleague so in work training to respect the boundaries the right to disconnect between employees should also be very important and it should go hand in hand with a legislation imposing the right to disconnect on employers Yeah, there are colleagues that they are mentioning they don't want to turn their house into an office. They want an office. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's, uh, this is, it's, this uh, is Cristiano, the fundamental yeah. argument, and I believe the fundamental, right? And I'm seeing a number of comments in the chat box. Um, yeah. Teleworking should not and must not become the norm. Okay, we teleworking was of fundamental importance during the pandemic. It saved countless number of jobs. It reduced commuting times. I'm coming from a small member state where, where, whereby, whereby congestions, although a lot of investment is being undertaken, but congestions were the norm in, in, in some peak, uh, peak, peak hours in the morning and, and in the evening. So uh, this congestion and commuting times uh, have also have also been resolved a bit with teleworking and flexibility and smart working, but. This is a fundamental point. There are 
already a number of trade unions at EU level, industry or Europe, for example, which is uh, already pushing forward and starting a campaign that teleworking should not be imposed on uh, on workers. It should be uh, at the discretion of employees to choose if they want to telework because, yes, it is a reality. There are a lot of employees who don't want to turn their homes into working spaces that they are not comfortable because they cannot work, they cannot concentrate uh, to work from their homes. And there are those who feel comfortable to do so and they should have the option to do so and we should not um, uh, we should not reduce their flexibility, but this should not be imposed. And I think that this is the next step forward, and I think that this should be a priority in the in the revision of the of the teleworking directive. Yeah, um, I fully agree. And um, actually, this is an item that have not, never been challenged even by the Commission. Uh, after the pandemic, uh, it's clear that everyone will be free to decide to renounce to any possible uh, uh, telework. There is no obligation whatsoever to telework. Uh, the question is the right and the possibility for those who wish to telework. Um, and I mean, the Commission is also confident that large majority of the staff will be in favor of getting telework. So there is no no concern about offices, not enough spaces. And that just published now a survey and uh, around 80 percent of the staff uh, wants to, to to have three or more days of telework per week uh, we are also concerned of those who are work, working for tasks that are not teleworkable uh, and then they there is also concern to to deal with that uh, telework will also impose uh, uh, impose a reshuffle of some colleagues task because those uh, who are for example dealing with missions even after the pandemic, it's clear that we are not longer to organize so many missions uh, that today. I mean, uh, teleconference and, uh, seems to be quite effective. So those who are dealing with the reimbursement on mission must uh, uh, change uh, and to be trained for changing their stuff. I mean, all these uh, dimensions uh, are totally in, taken into account when the negotiation will start. Uh, and we will stand for this principle. I mean, uh, I, I can ensure to those who doesn't want to telework that they will have the right to to stay five days. Uh, and then for them, the question of uh, right to disconnect is uh, is a bit less, uh, in a way, sensitive for those who are teleworking. Uh, because if you if you are not in your office and you are not teleworking, uh, the, the the possibility should be to be asked to, yeah. to to answer at any time of the night is uh, is a bit different too, uh, especially because if you don't telework, you will leave your laptop somewhere. Uh, you are not always online like others. They are teleworking. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very complex and a challenging time to 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 deal with. And uh, but what is important is not to take benefit of the situation in order to undermine the principle and the values of European Union. I mean. If the values can just be undermined because we telework, that would be the proof that these values are not strong enough. And we don't we don't consider that is the case. I mean, and we must lead by by the example. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there will be also possibility for those who telework uh, coming to the office to have a quiet place, uh, so uh, office on which you can go if you want to to concentrate yourself. Uh, like Alex has mentioned, the Commission is also putting forward its green dimension of telework, uh, less commuting staff coming, uh, less traffic, less traffic jam, uh, so better quality of the air in Brussels, that is already a concern. Um, yeah, interest of the service, we know that is the, the devil that can be always mentioned in order to do what a bad line manager wants to impose. <laughs> And we are going to, that's why it is important on, the, on your resolution, the right of redress. The right of redress is not because we don't trust, but it's part of the right balance. When you set a rule, you must also yeah. be, be able to deal with some challenges. Yeah. Uh, and the role of the self-representative, it's really underlined. And uh, I'm really glad to see on, uh, on the official document of the parliament our role too, because we don't have to leave any member by himself or herself dealing a challenging with a line manager. Uh, that is not the purpose. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, there is any odd desking we know. Uh, I, I think also the parliament is going to implement odd desking for its staff. Uh, and then I heard the idea is being floated around. Yeah. And this will, will also be undertaken, and also the idea of the commission will also try to be replicated for parliament employees. And there are a lot of questions about it and a lot of skepticism uh, about it. And I'm very skeptical, very yeah. skeptical of, the, of those working methods. No, no. We will also deal with that. Uh, we have organized already conference with experts uh, um, on that. Um, yeah, uh, I think that uh, yeah, there is a concern on privacy when uh, your Skype for business um, uh, can show that you are online or not. Uh, yeah. There are some specialists that will allow you to show that you are always online, even if you are not. Like colleagues are inventing. There are others <laughs> who are even changing the time of their smartphone in order to send a message and to make uh, appearing that the message has been sent at three o'clock in the in the night in order to show that they work during the night and they think that is something to be proud of uh, even if especially if you are manager uh, like it is a, the, the best bad example that you can provide yeah. to, to someone and that is the culture that we have to fight off basically not only by legislation yeah. but by train uh, yeah. we cannot we cannot solve these issues it's 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 something which is becoming very common uh, I can recall the situation for myself in my inbox. I see I see a couple of examples which constantly do this. I'm not bothered at night if someone sends an email at two in the morning, but there are other uh, colleagues, co-workers who maybe feel that 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 a notification at two in the morning, a vibration of their um, private cell phone at two in the morning is also amounts also to a direct even if they are not looking at the email but it amounts to basically infringing their right to disconnect and this cannot be solved simply by legislation alone i i, I mentioned in my in my in my initial remarks the faroshi culture the, the japanese culture the work until you die culture the american culture uh, always focusing on um, continuing to work to increase your productivity to increase your success the, the, this is not based on EU culture uh, and we should fight it off and we should fight it off by legislation and also by proper training to our to our employees. Yeah, I see there are questions for teleworking abroad is another item to be, to be duly discussed with Commission. Uh, during the pandemic and after the pandemic. Um, Colleagues are requesting to because we are also experts. So we, our families is not here, uh, and we are concerned with them and with the uh, whole parents uh, to be able to telework from abroad. Uh, because when you telework, you, you telework. Uh, now the question is uh, for how long, under which conditions, and uh, to be flexible enough. Uh, and is also something that is going to be discussed. Um, what we have considered to be totally unacceptable on the proposal put forward by the Commission is that after the pandemic, they will be more flexible on teleworking abroad than during the pandemic. This is, is mm -hmm. really a nonsense. Uh, they propose that after the pandemic, on the new normal, you, you are entitled to get a one month of teleworking abroad, eventually renewable, if you have any justification concerning the health of your parents or your families, uh, while the same condition are not allowing you to get your telework today, and when it comes to dealing with line manager, uh, they are line manager that they are more or less in favor of teleworking abroad. So even if you don't get any formal authorization, you can telework abroad. There are others they are against, and you are you must have a fight for ten days. And the commission is not able to control uh, because they consider that any line manager is free, uh, even if it is not. But there is also this central governance that is important to, to establish when it comes to have the rules to be applied. Uh, and our administration uh, seems to be quite weak in this respect and not to dare to challenge the director general. Uh, some of them are the specialists of sending messages at three or four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I hope for them that they have just uh, managed to change the time on their smartphone and they are sending not the message at the right time. <laughs> 
<laughs> because it can be bad for them to send message at four o'clock in the, systematically, not because you deal with an urgency that is normal, but every time you, you send message at three or four in the, in the morning. Uh, and then at seven, you are uh, already in your office and you seem to be quite uh, in good shape. So either you are a monster or you, <laughs> you have just managed to change the time on your smartphone. Uh, yeah, right to part to right time to to part time work. It's, it's still existing. Um, I think that we managed to to tackle all the most important issues. Then we know that you have to leave. Um, so I can only uh, thank you again and again for uh, being with with us. Uh, we will be in touch if we get questions. Any item to be discussed. Uh, yes. uh, I will, I will allow myself to send something. Yes, Cristiano, we will be sending to you the report because there were some questions that they want to see the legislation and the recommendation that was approved by Parliament so that you can maybe share it um, in, in, in a comment chat that you that you have or send it by email to your um, to your right. to your to your colleagues. Um, again, if, if if you would like any help from us, from me directly, I don't mind. To continue to put uh, pressure if, if this issue is not resolved uh, by uh, negotiations between empl employees, representatives, and the the Commission Human Resources when it comes to the implementation of the right to disconnect, uh, I will be more than willing to help out by moving forward uh, questions directly to the Commission, so that we can continue to mount pressure for the Commission to lead. By example, this is of fundamental importance for us, and it is. Of fundamental importance uh, to me that we have the leading uh, representative uh, of, of, of uh, union representative of commission employees who are also in favor of the right to disconnect and are willing to help out uh, in this fight to convince the commission uh, to basically start acting and not continue to basically delay this whole this whole this whole process to be enjoyed this right to be enjoyed not only by commission employees, but to uh, to be enjoyed by each and every em employee throughout the union without any distinction. All those employees who have contact uh, with digital technologies should and must have um, protection and full implementation of the right to disconnect. I think that we are going to apply the right to disturb you for the negotiation. You have every right to do so. <laughs> <laughs> and to ask your help at any stage of the negotiation. Yes, and I'm confident that we could manage to have all trade unions uh, with us on this battle because yeah. this, this is a matter of principle. Uh, and uh, I see a question when in the negotiation will start. I hope that we will start quite soon. Uh, we have required the Commission to start working uh, on the proposal. And I think that on, on the next weeks we will get something. Uh, so today they are still challenging among them in order to to agree on a proposal. Uh, but when the proposal will be on the table, we will get in touch, and your help Definitely. will be more than uh, appreciated and even required. Thank you very very thanks much, a lot. Alex. For... And thanks for all your work. Thanks a lot. <laughs> get in touch, okay. and f thank you to all the colleagues attending the meeting. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.